my name is Jonas Estefanos, and I'm here to speak to you today about cultural learnings that foreigners have in America for Make Benefit Glorious Nation of USA. Any more fans out there? <laughs> so my parents were born in Eritrea, which is a country in East Africa. They left in the early 80s, and they made it to Cincinnati, City, Las Vegas, where I was born and raised. Um, <laughs> So I was fortunate enough to be able to be brought up between two cultures. I had the Eritrean culture at home with my parents, and I got the American culture from so being here in the U.S. And these are some images just throughout my life. Um, just some things about the Eritrean culture. It's a very, very family-oriented, very family-centered. Um, they're very much about the idea of it takes a village to raise a child. Um, and the American culture is some of that as well, too, with the addition of, you know, we're very much about, you know, there's the concept of, of individualism and, you know, personal space and our own personal freedoms and how these things manifest and to how we interact important as well. We look at the personal space that we require, for example, when we're interacting with people, um, with a friend versus a <laughs> the casual acquaintance, whether you're in a public space, how we're using our time efficiently, um, how we greet each other, and, and how we interact. And this comes into play when we start talking about personal communication. And you start doing some quick math on this chart and you see that Roughly 90% of communication between people has absolutely nothing to do with the words that come out of your mouth. So when we start breaking down body language a little bit more, in nonverbal communication, we look at some of the aspects of um, your facial expressions, your gestures, your tone of voice, and these are all things that can be, are hardly open to misinterpretation depending on who you're speaking with and the culture that they're coming from. Um, one example I have here coming up in, boom, is <laughs> an image of an Iraqi soldier or I'm sorry, an American soldier going down the road in Iraq giving a thumbs up, unknown to him is that, in, in, in particular Middle Eastern or Muslim cultures, a thumbs up is also the equivalent of the middle finger. <laughs> Here we have a young woman sitting at a bar, she's got her hand curled up and she's calling the guy over and we look at this as being as something, you know, flirtatious, she's, she's being seductive, whereas from the, from the aspect of someone from the Philippines, someone who's Filipino, you would never use this gesture to call someone over because it's, it's, it's what you used to call dogs. And insert joke about women calling men and dogs being one of the same thing. So. <laughs> we have an image of Diana Ross. Just give me this a little too fast to slow it down just a little bit. Diana Ross, stop in the name of love. Hand is out, fingers extended, spread out, palm facing outwards, right? Stop in the name of love, nothing wrong with this, unless you're Greek. And this has an ancient tradition that dates back to the Byzantine Empire where when a convicted criminal would be tore, <laughs> would go through the streets on his way to jail, the villagers would actually smear feces into the guy's face. So we call this the moon sign. Diana's going to keep spreading it. <laughs> <laughs> gift giving. Uh, we have a guy here who's handing off a gift to a woman. And there's nothing wrong with this, right? Unless you pay attention and you notice that he's doing it with his left hand. And to us here, left-handed, right-handed, not that big of a deal. But there are certain, certain countries, certain cultures, India, Sri Lanka, certain African countries, and in the Middle East, the left hand is considered to be something that's unclean, and not to be used for something along the lines of giving a gift or eating. You're supposed to keep it to yourself. <laughs> Here we have an image of President Obama in the Oval Office. We have a young child in there, and he's patting his head, which is a nice, cool, and daring shot of him. However, in certain cultures, such as the Indonesians and the Vietnamese, their cultures believe that the spirit and the soul resides in the head. And to touch a child, to touch, a, to touch an adult anywhere on the head is considered to be disrespectful, and not something that's, something that's not supposed to be done. Um, there we go. <laughs> President Bush at a event in Texas with his daughter Jenna, and they're supporting the University of the Longhorns, right? So they're putting up the symbols. <laughs> And this, this image actually caused, caused headlines in uh, Norway. The Norwegians believe that this is the symbol of the devil. And they looked at that as Bush and his daughter Jenna supporting Satan. <laughs> so, and in Italy, even funnier, in Italy, you're basically saying to a man that his wife is a slut. <laughs> so, or the culture is not static. The, 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 the takeaway from this is that, you know, just be conscious, be aware, you know, you could be doing something that is, you know, inadvertently disrespecting someone from a different culture and, and vice versa. So when you're out there, when you communicate with people from different cultures, go <laughs> picture, right? <laughs> don't make assumptions, don't be afraid to interact. Just just get out there and do your thing. Thank you.